Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I trust and hope that you're doing really wonderful and you're going to be taking a look at what is going on across the North Atlantic. So we've got two active tropical cyclones as well as two disturbances, one of which is likely to become our next name storm potentially by later this week and eventually could be a hurricane. And Could there be impacts to land? We're going to be taking a look at the possibilities in this video and before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update and so we're starting out looking at the caribbean and we can see that there isn't much going on across most islands over in central america there is some activity across some spots nothing too crazy but uh, as it relates to any significant rainfall event that isn't happening right now there we can see lee offshore and then uh, and then in terms of rainfall through today there might be some showers popping up across some sections of cuba the cayman islands jamaica hispaniola puerto rico the virgin islands potentially even the northern leeward islands and uh, the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands, but nothing much is expected. As we head over into Central America, we see more of those shades of oranges and reds indicating more rainfall activity. So over in parts of Central and Northern South America, there's likely to be some substantial rainfall activity across some areas and then all of that associated with lee that is going to be remaining offshore not going to be an issue for anyone and so now let's go ahead and talk about our uh, active systems out there so we're going on to the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook so there we have lee it isn't moving much and it is located to the north of the leeward islands and so let's go ahead and take a look at the hurricane and here we have the latest cone forecast so it is sustaining category 3 intensity with winds of 120 miles per hour and is moving to the northwest at 8 miles per hour and through to around the early part of the midweek it should maintain a major hurricane status but should start weakening and as it makes that turn up to the north it should accelerate at a much quicker rate and pass to the west of bermuda and as I've mentioned in yesterday's update, even though it's going to be offshore, if it is close enough in proximity to the island to the point where tropical storm conditions could be felt, a watch or even a warning could be issued. Notice how much the cone widens. So that is because the center can pass anywhere within it. It doesn't necessarily have to follow with the uh, trajectory seen here. But nevertheless, it is still generating that dangerous surf, very rough seas out there. And so as it relates to marine activities, precaution should be exercised. And now we're moving on to Margo. So we can see here that it is sustaining winds of 65 miles per hour and making its way to the north at 8 miles per hour. So maybe by tonight, going to tomorrow morning, it will acquire hurricane status. But uh, it doesn't expect to be anything major out there. And as we can see, it's not heading for anywhere. And uh, there should be a a bit of erratic movement as we head to the end of this week we'll see but not a problem for anyone but then we've got our two disturbances 97l which is unlikely to develop so that should be off the map very soon and then we've got our next wave which has recently emerged from the african coast so imminent development of it is not expected however that chance is now at 50 percent that we could see something develop over the course of the next seven days and models agree that we will in fact see something it's just a matter of which where it goes and they're also expecting that this could become a hurricane so we're going to be looking at a few runs very shortly but this is going to be moving on a westward track and then start to make that turn to the west northwest so there is a pretty decent chance that it could miss the caribbean but in terms of uh impacts to the u.s or even bermuda in the long run that is pretty much uncertain at this point in time because the system is just so far out and we're bound to see some shifts in the potential track of the system here so we definitely have to keep watching it over the course of the next several days and so now let's go ahead and take a look at what models have to show starting out with the gfs so this might be a bit confusing but that is lee and that is margo so when we see those black circular lines being so tightly packed that is indicating a stronger system as we're seeing with lee and uh, there we have the forecast time up there so this is the gfs forecast as we head through this week so as we head to the middle of the week go into the end of the week gfs expects some gradual development of the system we may have a tropical storm early next week and then uh, gfs wants to take this very close to the northeastern islands of the caribbean and intensifying as it continues into the vicinity of the bahamas and then potentially bringing impacts to the u.s so 
And then as we head on to the Euro model there, you've got Lee and DeMargo out there, and then some gradual development of that tropical wave. And we can see here that Euro is expecting that it will be remaining out to sea, also passing well north of the Caribbean, and that is where the model run ends. Heading on to the Icon model now. So we've got that development system, and the Icon is expecting that it will be remaining out to sea. Take a look at where that high pressure is, and there we have Margo. So we've got that system having the opportunity to make its way up to the north. So we're seeing that these three models expect that we won't have something entering the Caribbean. It could be very close to northeastern islands, but no guarantee of any impacts. And then as it relates to conditions out there, we're looking at the dry air map. And we can definitely see that uh, there isn't a whole lot of dry air across the main development region right now during the Caribbean. There should be a conducive environment ahead of that tropical wave that will allow for it to develop. And those areas of denser dry air is indicated by those shades of red and uh, those oranges as well. So it isn't very plentiful out there right now. And then next we're looking at the wind shear. So this map might be a bit confusing, but there we have that white outline of the African coast, the Cabo Verde Islands. So the disturbance is right within that area. And where we see those green lines, that is where we've got favorable upper level winds, meaning that they're not too strong to disrupt the formation of our systems out there. Yellow indicates that uh, the shear is neutral. Meanwhile, the red indicates unfavorable shear. That is when those upper level winds are very strong and they displace thunderstorms. They cut them off and prevent much growth of the system on a whole and that is when we tend to see lopsided storms out there so we can see that ahead of the disturbance there is some of that conducive or that favorable those favorable upper level winds which shouldn't interfere much with its development and organization and we also know that the surface waters are off the charts so that is going to be feeling the system as it makes its way to the west and eventually to the west northwest and so guys i will continue to keep you posted on it so again, uh, there is a pretty decent chance that the system might not affect the Caribbean. However, uh, as we saw with some of the runs, it could be very close to northeastern islands. And so I'm not taking that out of the picture because that is one of the many possibilities on the table because this thing here is still pretty far out. However, by the end of this week, we might see a new tropical storm become of it. And Nigel is the next name to be used for the season. And then as it relates to Lee, it is a and it's Cat 3 status right now. Margo is not too far from hurricane strength and uh, could eventually become a hurricane maybe by tonight or early tomorrow morning. And I'll continue to keep you guys posted on all that is happening across the tropics. And that is pretty much it for this update. And so I trust and hope that you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to be with wise.